God, that's terrible. Make sure you delete that. Uh, <laughs> all right. My name is Billy Bolt. I'm 25 years old from Newcastle in England. I ride for the Husqvarna factory racing team and I have five world titles. With three words to describe Super Enduro. Uh, intense, explosive, chaotic. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say more difficult. I think it definitely increases the intensity. Obviously, um, you know, riding or racing indoors is always quite a special feeling. It's, it's something that not a lot of people, or not many people get to do. Um, so just that whole, that whole experience and whole atmosphere is, is cool and, and one which I actually enjoy a lot. Um, but I think, you know, the, the race is actually probably just as difficult if it was outdoors. The, the crowd element is, uh, just adds probably to the excitement, I would say. When the gates bar drop, I think it's it's pretty standard for everybody. You know, you have a mixture of nerves, excitement, um, you know, anticipation, or what you'd expect really. I don't think there's anything too crazy happens to me. I obviously, just try to be as focused as possible and uh, execute a good start because that makes your life a hell of a lot easier in the race. Two row starting gate is, isn't the most normal thing in the world, but it's I'm pretty used to it now. It's super enduro. It's ten, it's been around for quite a while, even you know when I was just just watching the sport and stuff. So um, it actually does feel quite normal. I think it's good. I think it gives the fans definitely a lot a lot of excitement in the second race because it gives some of the the slower riders a chance to get the whole shot and to run up front. It always feels good to win and then to come back from, a, from five months off and, and uh, have, a, have a clean sweep is, is special. And it was just relieving more than anything. I think everyone will agree I was a bit of a nightmare to be around that last week leading up to the race. You know, I just, uh, just getting irritated at just the, the stupidest things. And uh, despite, you know, you're telling yourself and everybody it's not because you're nervous. It definitely is because you're nervous. So. It was uh, just a relief more than anything to get to get the ball rolling and to kind of pick up where I left off in Super Enduro, let's say. The track in Germany is always so technical and, and they cram so many obstacles into the arena that it's very easy to make a mistake. And um, the actual races in Germany, um, you know, despite it being the one heat that I lost all year, I actually took a lot from it and I actually learned a lot from that, from that race. And, um, and yeah, like Johnny got the better of us that one race. We actually had a really close battle in the first race and I, uh, I just came out front. And then, yeah, second race just made too many mistakes of my own and, and, and yeah, lost a heat, which, at the time, I wasn't really too bothered, but when you look back at the year and it's the only heat you've lost for the whole championship, it becomes a bit annoying, especially now that's happened two years in a row. I've won every heat apart from one, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. It would be nice to say that I went 15-0 uh, or however many heats it is, but we'll, uh, we'll, leave, that, we'll leave that goal for, for the future, hopefully. I think in the first heat we'd both come close in the sand and I'd kind of, uh, he'd backed out of it. And then I think, you know, second, oh no, in fact, it was the other way around. I think I backed out of it, he had the inside line. He actually had, I was just kind of daydreaming and he had a good line coming down through the start, finish straight and it led him onto the inside in the sand, um, which he, is how he passed us in the first race. And then uh, I watched the footage back and thought, what am I doing? I kind of just almost let him pass there. So he got back alongside us and I was pretty committed not to, not to give in uh, coming into the sand in uh, any sand corner on a Super Enduro tracks. It's difficult to get around at the best of times, let alone when you're kind of smashing bars with someone else. So I, I actually almost stayed up. He went down first and then I think my foot peg goes into his front wheel. Something just catches me at the last minute and pulls me down too. But, you know, it is what it is. It was, uh, it was pretty much a racing incident. I don't kind of blame him at all really it was uh, it was nice to have a bit of argy bargy with someone i'm not not scared of rubbing elbows so that was that was cool that finish line takeoff actually got pretty rooted and was quite easy to get cross rooted and that's uh, that's obviously what he happened i'm guessing he didn't realize i was as close as i was and he he got cross rooted and, and shut off rather than trying to make it over the jump and he kind of stopped 
a third of the way over and I was, you know, I was only kind of a few feet behind him, so there was no chance I was stopping. I was kind of in midair, screaming, and, and uh, thankfully we both came out of it unscathed. But it was uh, it was a brief moment of panic while I was in midair, thinking oh, I can't do nothing but land on top of him here. But thankfully we're both okay. That um, kind of rock climb bridge over under. Um, I was actually, you know, really good at it and I was getting it good all day and then for some reason, second last lap, I think it was a second last lap or third last lap of the race, and rather than wheelie up it, which is what I'd been doing all day, it was faster than everyone else doing it that way and I was getting it consistently, I just decided to try ride it, um, to play it safe, which was a stupid idea and yeah, front end slid. Ended up getting stuck, and then I struggled just to get up from where I was stuck. Um, but then, you know, come last race, I made sure I wasn't making any more mistakes on it, and I was uh, I wheelied up in every lap on the last race. I, I wasn't thinking really of the championship. Obviously, I knew it was possible. You know, I kind of overthink absolutely everything, so I knew mathematically what could happen, what needed to happen. I knew every situation really, but I did really. really Put it out of my mind, you know. Um, I didn't care if it was the first race, the second race, or the third race. To be honest, um, it was nice to get it done in the first race and then just relax and, like I say, uh, well, I guess you could say relax. But I was wearing gold kit, so the pressure was on even more for the second two races. You know, I was putting it on, thinking, I hope everyone's going to let us win these next two races. Um, but uh, it turned out, you know, I actually rode pretty well. You know. I, Got my, my starts were really good all night, and I actually made life, you know, pretty easy for myself um, in Poland for the final round. A lot easier than I had made it for myself in previous rounds, anyway. So it was nice. I think you almost kind of go blank. Obviously, you're well aware of the situation. You know, you you're happy. You're you're over the moon. Um, but yeah, you just kind of you just kind of go blank and, and kind of well, I do anyway, and just 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 enjoy it, you know. I'm, I'm, and then you you get a little bit of time to reflect, and I just feel grateful, you know, that I'm that I'm in the position I'm in, that I get to ride motorbikes. I think kind of the first championship, or the first you know couple of championships are all really so special because it is literally you know your whole life's work to get to it, and you know there's there's so many people that you owe it to, to, that helped you get in the position you're in. And, and you still don't get as wrong, you still definitely have all of them feelings and you're as grateful for that, but um, I feel like now for this one, I kind of want to enjoy it and I want the people that's around us and the people that's that's part of the journey, I want them to, to be able to enjoy it as well. And I'm kind of, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm as thankful and as, as grateful and just want everybody that's it, that is part of it to enjoy it and and, uh, and I think it, it worked out pretty good. I mean I get, I, my family don't get to come to every race so any race that they are there it's, it's, it is special and then uh, you know with it being a one where you wrap up a world title it's what can I say it's like it's what dreams are made of. Yeah, it was cool. I, th I mean, I've had obviously the championship shirts and, and bits and pieces before, but then uh, I obviously must have filled everyone with confidence this year because we had some gold kit and some gold boots and, and it was sick, you know. And when you're a kid and you're watching, watching racing on TV and you're, you're, you're watching the final round of the championship and there's, it's stuff I've watched and I've, you know, kind of idolised all my life growing up. So now to be part of it and to to have my own set of gold boots and gold kit and, and it's just so sick and I hope there's kids watching that got as much out of it as I used to get when I used to see it as a kid and you know it pushes them on to, to go for their goals. Being a motorbike rider, a racer is all I've ever wanted to do and there's kind of no question so it's been my whole life to get to this point and it's a lot of effort from a lot of people to put us in this position and I definitely don't take that for granted and, and um, I'm like I say, I'm just grateful to be in this position I am to, ride, to be a professional motorbike rider more than anything, you know, to be a world champion on top of that is an added bonus uh, and makes it, you know, even more special. My first couple of world titles were when the world was going a little bit crazy and there wasn't 
too much traveling and we definitely had a couple of titles where we had to, where it was a subdued, subdued celebration. So we are uh, making the most of these ones. I do remember doing a burnout when I was a kid and my dad was going absolutely ballistic at us because it was, the tire wasn't destroyed and, and stuff. So you, I do still get them guilty feelings, the fact that I'm, um, that I'm not, that I'm, that I'm burning through a tire. But um, I've actually, I haven't done any burnouts or maybe done one, but it was very minimal because I actually used the same rear moose for the whole championship. Um, and I didn't want to destroy it doing a burnout. Usually when you do a burnout, it expands because it gets hot and, and stuff like that. So I've actually held off from doing burnouts at every round of the championship this year. And then I thought, you know, the moose has done its job. Um, the championship bikes look nicer lined up in the championship form when they've got all the middle treads missing anyway. So it can join the, it can join the collection of bikes with, uh, with no tread left on it at the end of a championship. Uh, yeah, Poland fans are sick. Uh, they they are definitely up there with one of the best. You know, I think um, they used to be. You know, I'd say ninety five percent shouting against us. Them them times and a couple of times me and Taddy have been battling. But now I think they're they they're on. I'm kind of ninety five percent. They're kind of on my side. Well, it feels like it anyway. And you know, their autograph signing and those that I meet in the pits. There's some really really. Uh, really, really sick fans, and a lot of regulars also. I recognise a lot of faces, and and there's uh, some of the smaller kids always bring his drawings and stuff like that, and and those that have you know I've chucked gloves to or given stuff to in the past, bring it back for it to be signed and stuff. So it's nice, it's nice. I think the sport is um, is headed in the right direction, and it's definitely growing, and and. Uh, just being so accessible, you know, the whole things in the stadium. I think um, Super Enduro definitely has a healthy future, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, to, to just have a small part of Husqvarna's history is, is pretty special. You know, it's, it's 120 years old. It's a brand that's been around for a very long time and has such a, a strong place in, in motorsport and motorcycle racing history. So to be a small part of that is, is pretty cool. You know, a lot of people from even back when I was, you know, in my trials career, um, you know, a lot of people helped me get to the level I did in that. And then obviously, you know, made the switch over to Enduro and thankfully and magically, I guess you could say, got picked up by Husqvarna just after one year and that. And it's, it's great. I wouldn't want to be part of any other team. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to go into any individual names, but most of all, I guess, you know, the team I have now, the Husqvarna, my family and my girlfriend, Roxy.